Hello there, in this video today I'm going to show you how I got a 3.5 inch hard drive working with just a 2.5 inch enclosure. So you can buy enclosures for 2.5 and 3.5. It just so happened that I've got lots of 2.5 enclosures lying around and I didn't have any 3.5 enclosures. I must stress, this is just a workaround. Plenty of scope for damage when you do it this way. If you actually need something that's going to be working long term, just get a 3.5 inch enclosure. You can get them on eBay and Amazon all day long in the UK between 50 and 20 pounds. However, you can get the 2.5 ones for often less than five UK pounds. Now, if you were just to use a 2.5 enclosure little board here, this is a USB 3 one, it will light up, but it won't spin up. It will work fine on a 2.5 hard drive because that's what it's designed for. And the motors on a 2.5 inch enclosure will work on five volts. But unfortunately the 3.5 inch enclosures, the larger ones, need 12 volts for the motors. And if you plug it in just via USB, it's providing five volts. It's gonna recognize and it's gonna make a beep noise on your computer that something's been plugged in, but the motor's not gonna spin up so it won't be able to read anything. But what we've done here is basically bodge it by injecting our own 12 volt power supply. And I've just transferred 200 and something gigabytes onto this here and it's worked absolutely fine. And now I can read those 200 and something gigabytes absolutely fine as well. So this is just a workaround, just a little bit of fun to get you out of an emergency situation. If you actually want something to work long time, I just say it again, get yourself the proper enclosure because they're not a huge amount of money anyway. So you might be wondering what 12 volt one you actually need. So we're gonna be getting five volts from our computer. If you look at your drive here, the one that you're using, it will tell you what you need. So can you see here, rated five volts at 400 milliamp. Well, I know that mine is USB three, so I know that this is gonna be rated at 900 milliamps. So we're already okay with the five volts. And on 12 volts, this drive here needs 850 milliamps. So I looked in my box of adapters and I've just got this D-Link one here. I think it was for a router years ago or router if you're from other countries other than the UK. And it clearly says here, output 12 volts at one amp. So that's a thousand milliamps, that's 850 milliamps. So this is gonna power this absolutely fine. But now you need to work out where you need to put it on. And if we get this little diagram here, you can see that this connector here is the same here. Can you see here? Small and big, so it's gonna be this way round, yeah? And if you look at the big connector here, here, the last three pins are the 12 volt pins. So this is the pin out of it, and we're gonna to need to inject 12 volts into it. So if we zoom right the way in, what I've done is I've cut the plug off the end of this cable here. Now. It doesn't actually matter. It will tell you, if I zoom in again, what is positive and negative, but you're gonna need a multimeter to do this anyway. So it doesn't really matter. It just doesn't matter if it's center pin positive or center pin negative, because you're gonna be wiring it up to the board yourself anyway. You have to cut this off. But you can see here that it is center pin negative, but it doesn't actually make a difference because you're gonna be using your multimeter. So what you need to do is, before it's attached to this, you need to plug it in, well, obviously you need to cut the lead off, separate out the wires, and then you're gonna be getting your multimeter, and you need to see, this has an added little switch on, let's just turn that on, set this to uh, DC voltage, and you need to go across your leads. And basically, if I go across them like this, can you see it's reading 12 volts in the correct way? If I was to go across it this way, you will see that it's reading 12 volts with a negative before it. So I now know that this top lead here is not positive and this bottom wire here is not negative. But if you have it reading correctly, you now know that this top one's negative and this bottom one here is positive because it's reading 12 volts positive. So that's how you can tell nice and easily, even if your adapter, which it will have, but even if it doesn't have let you know what's center pin positive. You can just work it out with a multimeter. You know that's the wrong way there, so then you're gonna go here. Yeah, so now let's zoom in and I'll show, show you what I uh, soldered to. So obviously we've got negative and positive. 
We now know, because of our diagram here, that the last three are 12 volts positive. So we're gonna be connecting up the last three with the positive wire here. So you can see our tinder wire, and all I did is, obviously it's very small, you do have to use a very small soldering iron for this. I haven't actually cleaned up the board yet, but you can see that's just a, a bit of a burnt flux. But do not go across any of the other pins because otherwise you're gonna be putting 12 volts into the other pins. I've gone just on the last three pins. One, two, three, these three here. And I've connected up the wire to all three of them, yeah? And then you need to decide where you're putting your negative. Now, obviously you've got negative here on your little diagram. So we now know that pins four, five, and six are gonna be negative, yeah? Or you can just find out where the shield of the USB goes to. And I know the shield of the USB by using continuity on the meter is going to these big ground planes just at the end here. So I'll show you it on the pins and also that. So we're gonna put our meter into continuity mode where it beeps when you tap it, tap the leads together. And if I was to go between here, because we know that this is gonna be ground and here, can you hear it beeps, yeah? So basically between here and this one here, it's beeping. And also if we go between pins four, five, and six, it should also be beeping. So let's go here and go on to pins four, five, and six, yeah? So you can hear them there. And also there should be these ones as well, yeah? So you can see that these are ground. So you could attach your wires to here and here, it's just that there's a good chance of shorten between your positive and negative. But if you go here, you see it's nicely out of the way, or I could have gone to here. And that is it, you are now gonna inject your own 12 volts into it to make it work. And then what I do is, I plug this in first with the USB, so clearly this just goes into here. So it goes this way around. Now, there's massive scope for error here. You could short something on here and blow everything up. You might burn out your USB ports. You can cause damage to this. So like I keep saying, get the proper enclosure. But if you want it as a bit of an emergency or with me, I'm only gonna be plugging this in to transfer videos to maybe once every two or three months. In which case, then I don't need to buy an enclosure. I can just transfer what I need and then just put this away safely again for another time. So I plug this in first and then I have a little switch here. I'll plug this in first, then I turn this on, and it appears to work just fine. So let me get a little laptop in here just to show you a video that's come off this one here. Right, so I've got a little laptop here, but it has got a USB 3 port here. You can see it's in blue. What I forgot to mention is, you're gonna have to be careful how blobby you have your solder because, I mean, I've done it on this side here to make it easy. It doesn't leave a huge amount of room spare because if you used a much thicker adapter with massive wires here and big blobs of solder, you might actually struggle plugging it in here. But anyway, watch this. This one is, uh, is fine. So I'm gonna be plugging this in over here. And also you have to be delicate with it as well. So like I keep saying, it would be much better just to get a proper enclosure. Right, we plug it in there, but it's not gonna actually come up because we haven't done the power. But now if we do the power, this will start spinning up. And uh, there, I can already feel it spinning up. And it's gonna come up here in a minute. Hopefully you can hear it spinning up. And there we go. Can you see it's come up here now? I'm gonna go into it and show a video working. Speed-wise seems fine. This computer is always a little slow, but when I have this into my main PC, I can open and close files perfectly. Hi, in this video, so I'm going to show you how you can check the there remaining charge that's coming from here. Sony headphones. This is the model number here. If you look at the app, it will have it in increments of 10. There, and uh, let's just go back and open something else. So I'm going to show you how and there you go. And pivot your DJI Osmo. So you can see it's a nice little workaround. And then when you're finished, you're just going to be closing it down and you're going to be ejecting the drive like you would normally do. So let's get rid of all that. Eject. And by doing that, it's going to wind this down. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to take out this now. And by taking it out from here, it will cut 
the actual 12 volt power to here. But then when it's ramped down like that, then just turn it off and obviously unplug it from the uh, mains. And uh, there you go, that's how you can use, I'm not saying you should, but you can use a 2.5 inch enclosure on a 3.5 inch caddy. Obviously, only do it in cases of an emergency. It's never gonna be as good as having a proper caddy with it. But uh, it's nice that you can have a workaround to get 12 volts to uh, run up the motors because that's what you need the 12 volts for. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.